Hey friends, it's been way too long, but we're back. Welcome to the vlog. Hey friends, so welcome back. Sorry for the long gap in videos. Um, basically, it's just been a long, cold, depressing winter and not a whole lot to report. Um, I didn't really know uh, what to do videos on uh, for the most part. So basically that said, it's time for an update on what I was doing and uh, what's in the future. Coming up pretty quick, actually. So first things first, yeah, we were hunkered down, uh, had the room in my sister's place. Rollins and I were basically cozy and warm and I was working on all my side hustles, trying to kind of come up with a stream of income uh, from multiple different avenues. And to be honest, didn't really go uh, as planned. Um, I'm going to do a video, which will be probably the video after this one, which is kind of a rundown of all the side hustles, all the things I was trying, doing, what worked, what didn't, um, what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to uh, give up on, uh, that kind of thing. So that video will be coming up next. Um, so I'm not going to get too in-depth with that, but let's just say um, it's still a bit of a struggle. I'm not doing as well as I had hoped, um, but that said... We do have forward momentum, and I'll get to that in a bit. So while I was uh, kind of hunkered down uh, working on all the side hustles, I also ended up going down a rabbit hole, which is, um, I guess you would call it the crypto market. Um, basically what happened is I started seeing things popping up in my peripheral vision about uh, photography NFTs. Now, because I'm a photographer, I'm like, okay, what's going on? What is this? Uh, what are these? What are these things? Um, and I think I'll probably do another video kind of like, a, you know, photography NFTs for dummies, because um, that's basically where I started. Um, I feel a little odd doing a video about it right now because I technically haven't made any sales, but basically... Um, I have no interest in, in, you know, like bored apes and all these like cartoon profile pic things that people are doing and spending like thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars on. I don't really have an interest in those. Those don't, I just don't really, I don't see the value in those. I know some people do. They're collectibles, whatever. I get it. Um, but I'm more in the art-based mentality where... You know, if it's a, a, a real piece of art or a, a fine photograph or that kind of thing, then, you know, you might get my attention. That said, uh, into looking into NFTs, I started going down the rabbit hole, which is um, just crypto in general. Um, I knew about Bitcoin. Here's a little funny story. Back in, I probably would say 2015, 2016, it was before I left to start doing this whole living on a trailer adventure type thing. I was still in my cubicle in the old job, uh, sitting around one day bored out of my skull because I didn't have any work because I'm up too fast for most people. And uh, I ended up going on, I think it was like Wired or some, you know, Slashdot or something, some crazy tech website like that. And there was an article and it was basically how Bitcoin was at parity with the US dollar. I remember reading that article and thinking, you know, I should probably just throw a couple hundred bucks on that. You know, just get a couple hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin and see what happens. But the thing back then is it wasn't really looked at as an investment thing. It was more just kind of a, you know, it was still so in its infantile stages that it was just kind of like, you know, will you ever even use it? Would you, you know, and because I was not really you know, akin to all the ins and outs of how it worked and the history behind it and all that kind of thing. It was just one of those things where it's like, you know, I kind of like the idea of, uh, you know, digital money, digital currency, that kind of thing. And and for a brief second, I thought I should put some money into it um, just to have some, you know, basically. And the only reason 
Ironically, that I didn't was because I was saving money for this lifestyle and this trip. And here I am trying to continue on this trip in this lifestyle. And had I thrown $200 at Bitcoin back then and just basically forgot about it, I would be a multiple, 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 multiple millionaire right now. So I find that kind of funny. Anyways, um, back to uh, the whole rabbit hole. Basically went down the rabbit hole and I've since put a little bit of money on Bitcoin. Um, I have bought, bought a few altcoins, not much, you know, like $100 here, $100 there. Um, nothing major yet. Um, and in prime Wayne fashion, you can pretty much call me the cooler of anything. Um, I buy a little bit of crypto and what does it do? It dives. It's freaking right now. It's like rock bottom. Like Bitcoin is, you know, like lost 50% of its value. Everything else is just like, you know, like circling the drain. Um, but I'm one of those guys where I do think it's a technology and I, and I do think it's a, um, an asset that is going to become very popular once it becomes more mainstream. So basically I'm, you know, am I selling? No, I bought what I bought and I'm just going to sit on it until it all comes back because just like any market, it will come back. So that said, um, that's a little bit of, you know, just kind of like an insight on something else that's on my radar. Um, I did invest into a couple things that um, may or may not work out. We'll see. Um, I will keep you posted. I'm not one of those guys that's like, I put some money on this and so should you. No way. Um, I'm one of those guys that is basically like, I put some money on this and I'm not even going to really talk too much about it until I know it's working or it has actually done something for me. Then I will share it. Um, will it be too late? Possibly. Maybe not. We'll see. So yeah, despite winter being long, um, there was a, a stint there for about a month and a half where I swear every weekend, like Friday or Saturday, there would be like a big storm. And we get more snow dumped on top of more snow, dumped on top of more snow. I think I have a little bit of footage that I took uh, just outside with my phone uh, with uh, Rollins. Shows a little bit of our, our snow um, here in Spring Hill. Um, and it just seemed to take forever for it to go and forever to warm up. But it was kind of weird because like literally about a week, two weeks ago, um, it was still like raining, but trying to snow. And the last three days have been like 20 plus degrees, sunny and warm and humid. And it's just kind of like switched. It was like, yeah, crazy. It was like somebody came along and went, okay, winter's over, click. We're now into summer. The grass went from brown to green in like three days. It's growing, it's, you know, things are all turning green, the flowers are budding. It's just kind of crazy. I guess we can refer to that as like Canadian seasonal transitions, which are basically just kind of like, oh, winter, summer, winter, summer. So that said, I'm obviously back in the trailer uh, because the weather started to warm up. So um, I'm back in the trailer and I also wanted to get out of my room and get packed up because uh, my sister sold her house. Her and Leon uh, found a new house. Um, long story short, basically she was on Facebook, um, and saw a lady looking for a house in Spring Hill close to the hospital. She messaged her back and a deal was struck and they have till June 1st to be out. And it's now May 14th today. And I basically decided I'm going to help as much as possible getting them moved and that kind of thing. Uh, they did find a new place. It's uh, literally three blocks away, um, on a different street. And, um, yeah, they took possession two days ago, the 12th. Yeah, the 12th, they got their keys. Um, so we've been slowly moving stuff in and, um, pretty much just kind of getting, uh, that going. And I didn't want to be the guy stuck in the driveway when the new person is here trying to move in. So, um, I started figuring out what the hell I was going to do. So basically I decided if all goes well, I want to head down south for the winter, next winter. So with that said, I do have some things to do in Alberta. I should probably get a checkup. Um, just a couple things I want to, you know, see a doc about. Um, and uh, I have to renew my license and we'll have to renew the registration on the truck, that kind of thing. So I figured, okay, well, I'll uh, make plans to head west. 
And then I was kind of uh, watching the world events and the inflation go up and the prices of everything go up and the price of gas is now at $2 a liter. And starting to panic because of my pre-mentioned uh, financial situation isn't all that great. Uh, to be honest, I've never left on a journey, on an adventure with so little money in the bank. Um, I'm not going to lie, if my truck breaks down, I am royally screwed. Um, uh, my credit card is maxed. Uh, my bank account is, you know, not in a very good state. But I have enough money to get going and we're going to basically leave here on a wing and a prayer. So basically, if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, uh, last year I did um, kind of a campground tour, tour around Nova Scotia because we were still kind of locked in. And I basically did a campground tour where I traded videos and photo and a little bit of extra exposure for a place to stay for 10 to 14 days. And it was very well received, like it did actually really well. Um, I was surprised and overwhelmed at like how popular it was and how much response back I got. And because it was so well received, I decided this year to basically see if I could do that while I work my way west. And so far, I have four campgrounds booked. Basically, pretty much two weeks at a time. Um, my first stop is Durham Bridge Campground in New Brunswick. And that is actually run by Carrie and Rob. And they are transplants from BC. So I think they're from the island, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember for sure. But I'm really looking forward to meeting them hanging out because, you know, we have that in common. And then after that, I go to... Camping Transit is what it's called, and it's a campground in Levi, Quebec, run by a French fellow, I got a bug, run by a French fellow named Rock, and looking forward to uh, meeting him. He seems pretty cool. So I'm there for two weeks, and that's basically right across the river from um, old Quebec City. So if providing, you know, I'm not completely broke, I can maybe go and uh, spend some time in old Quebec City. And then from there, I go to the Lazy Rock Campground, which I believe is just outside of Matawa, Ontario, which is up kind of close to the Quebec border, a little higher up in Ontario. And that's run by Jonathan and Charisma. And it actually looks kind of fancy. So I'm kind of looking forward to that too. Um, it looks like a really nice campground. So I'm gonna check that out. And then from there, head into Wawa, Ontario, and there's a lake just above, uh, just north of town. And it's a Wawa RV resort. And Renee there got back to me. So I'm there till I believe it's uh, July 20th. So basically from May 20th to July 20th, I'm booked. And from there, I've reached out to campgrounds west of Wawa, but I haven't heard back from anybody. So if you happen to be one of those campgrounds and you're checking out this video to see, you know, if I'm legit or whatever, get on it. Because um, it's been a couple weeks where I've been kind of waiting on these ones. Nobody's got back to me, so I'm starting to message uh, campgrounds more or less basically into uh, Manitoba now. So there might be a, you know, two or three days driving, um, depends on the money situation. Who knows? Maybe I'll stop somewhere else, uh, like a provincial park or something that depends. Um, but basically if you're one of those campgrounds and you don't want to miss out, get on it, let me know. And then from there, yeah, I'm, uh, reaching out to campgrounds in Manitoba and then Saskatchewan, Alberta. I have a friend whose dad lives in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, and he would like some, uh, Nice photos done of him. So I might trade a little time on his land for those. Um, that might give me a, a bit of a stop there. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't really reached out to campgrounds in Saskatchewan or Manitoba yet, just because I'm still kind of waiting to, you know, see what the timing is, if I can get any more through the uh, last part of Ontario. And basically, yeah. So we'll be slowly heading west. And I like the idea that um, I'm in a campground for two weeks because A, it kind of gives me the time to, you know, do what I need to do for them, like the videos and the, the photos uh, in the best light. But it also gives me some time to explore. And this time around, 
uh, two weeks in one place gives me a you know bit of a chance to possibly accumulate some extra income for the next leg. So yeah, it's it's pretty bad when um, I look at my bank account and I'm like, okay, even if I just got in the truck, not even towing, but just like got in the truck and tried to tried to drive west, I probably wouldn't have enough to make it all the way. It it's yeah. Um, that said. If you want to buy a t-shirt or buy a photo print, all my links are in my description to all the stuff that I do to try and raise money for these adventures and this whole lifestyle. It's kind of frustrating because I've managed to keep my expenses so low that it should be easy. But for some reason, I just, I'm not, it's not having the luck. So, um, yeah. Not going to whine about money. Um, to, to be honest, I, I, I don't really feel like I should be whining about anything. I'm, well, I guess I'm technically not whining. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm letting you guys know, you know, the situation. Um, I'm not whining. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I chose this lifestyle and it's one of those things where it's just, you know, it comes and goes and there's going to be feast or famine times and that's the way it is. Uh, to be honest, I'm quite grateful that I live in a country and a part of the world that I'm not fleeing from some psychopath Hitler wannabe dictator asshole fleeing for my life from bombs um, and if uh, most of you I believe who watch my channel um, are in the same boat where we're not running from that um, so I think we need to uh, count ourselves pretty lucky and feel pretty grateful no matter what kind of uh, hardships we might be going through because it's just one of those things where it's like we're not over there we're not dealing with that i i have been able to help a little bit um again i'm gonna get into all of this uh in my side hustle video but long story short um i did a t-shirt that uh basically did well and um was able to you know like i basically sold it saying that you know whatever half of whatever i make off this shirt actually there's a few of them but this one particular one went kind of viral but basically I had a shirt that, that did well and I was able to donate um, a little bit of a chunk of change. Obviously it's money that, yeah, I could have used it for myself, but that wasn't, I mean, I advertised that I was given half away and I gave half away. So um, yeah, more on that in the next video. But for now, basically there's your update, there's your rundown. Um, I'm sorry it took so long. There's just not a whole lot happening. I was pretty much you know, head down working on stuff and, um, yeah, that's about that. Now I hear Rollins barking. He's off his leash. Usually he's pretty good. He's just been hanging in the yard, but I think I should probably go get him. So on that note, I'm going to bid you adieu and I'll see you in the next video. Um, do the whole like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to go get my dog and I'll talk to you all soon. Okay, bye.